Welcome back, everyone, to the Passive Road to Retirement podcast. We are your hosts, Andrew Jarrett and Nick Cooper. Today, we're joined by Sonia Rockville. Sonia is the principal and founder of Bedrock Real Estate Investors, a privately owned real estate company specializing in the acquisition and management of multifamily apartments in the United States. She has syndicated and operated multifamily deals totaling 462 units valued at over $25 million. She has successfully cycled four apartment complexes totaling 374 units. Sonia began her career as an auditor and then transitioned to finance at a Fortune 500 company. Her depth of knowledge in business analytics and strategic implementations that drive growth has made her successful in acquiring and operating multifamily properties. Sonia has been adjunct instructor for the NYU School of Professional Studies and serves as treasurer of the Council of Urban Real Estate. Sonia holds a master's of business admin from Baruch College and a business or a bachelor of science in accounting from Rutgers University. She is also a graduate of Project REAP, which is the Real Estate Association Program. Sonia is a certified public accountant and licensed real estate agent in the state of New York. Sonia, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's great to be here. Super nice pumped, man. Sonia. So I guess kind of the first question I'll ask is why multifamily? Why real estate for you? Yeah. So um, thanks for asking that. So, you know, my my background, as, as um, Andrew, I appreciate you reading, um, is mm -hmm was really in accounting and and I thought that that's how I was going to continue my career or start my career I did start my career in accounting but I thought that that was what I was going to do long term and when I started working at public accounting firm after I graduated from college I realized that I, I didn't want to be a partner um I I just saw the path that that was there and I I realized that that wasn't going to be it for me um, and you know, for me, I, I, I also, I grew up in, I grew up in, in Queens and, uh, currently I live in Brooklyn, but we would make a lot of trips back and forth to visit family. And I remember at that time, which was a while ago, seeing a lot of dilapidated apartments and homes in, in, in Brooklyn, um, which is, which is, uh, turned around significantly now, but at that time I was, I always questioned, you know, lack of housing and 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 why are there all of these dilapidated buildings and so that kind of stuck with me and as i continued on through my career i really just had this fascination with real estate i, I grew up initially in an apartment building and to me housing is you know it, it is a primal it's a it's a primal need and it and it's so when i think about real estate and, and the fact that it's tangible you can transform it you know I really love, I really love multifamily housing, and I really love apartment buildings because of, I guess that's how I I grew up in one, and also just because I think it it's so important to to live at a place where you feel comfortable and safe. So those are the things that have always been, I think, a part of me through through my journey. Awesome, sure. that's a great answer. I guess kind of expanding on that. Was there a one deal that kind of like made the light bulb turn off for you? Because I mean, you're in over 400 units. Like what was the one deal that kind of like, hey, this is, I could do this, you know? Yeah. So uh, I would say, you know, it, it was, it was, it was our, the first deal, the first, the first deal. Um, but I started out before I did my first deal, which is a syndication, I did passively invest in, in other deals because I really wanted to learn. Right how to do it. And I wanted to have a little bit of track record, like on my resume, my, you know, my new resume that I was building yep. up as I transitioned from corporate. And, um, and so the very first deal was sort of like, okay, I'm, you know, asking people to, to, you know, to take a risk. All, all deals have risks, but this was going to be my first one. And, you know, I, I went out to my network and uh, my partner and I went out to our respective networks to syndicate it. And it actually was, you know, the best deal that we that I've, I've done so far to date. 
And it, um, that was the one that made me feel like this is great. I'm so happy for the people that invested with us and who had trusted us, um, especially being that that was my first deal. But, you know, a lot of people reminded me, hey, you, you know, you have a background in, in finance and accounting. And so it's, yeah, you're doing something different, but, you know, why not you? Hey, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Are you ready to maximize your real estate investing to its full potential? Join us at Level Up REI Coaching and take your life and business to all new levels. Send an email to nick at leveluprecoach.com. That's nick, N-I-C, at leveluprecoach.com. Do you think at times like someone who's like an accountant or an engineer, that can be a hindrance and also a, you know, a help, I guess I'd say? Yes, I, I definitely think so. A lot of times, um, and I, I know when I catch up with some of my uh, former colleagues or people I used to work with there, you know, the, a lot of them are like, wow, I would have never thought, you know, accountant turned entrepreneur is not typically the path. Um, and so uh, it, it can, it can definitely, it, it, it's, it's part of my DNA. So it makes me yeah. uh, sometimes conservative, sometimes overly conservative. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, like more analytical in terms of trying to think things through when in, in, in actuality, a lot of times you just, you, you do need to just take the step. You need to take the yes. action and then, so, and, you know, correct after that, you know, um, not doing, you know, something crazy, but just like, you have to just do something and then, and then use that to help to decide how do you move forward? No, that's perfect. Thank you. Makes sense. Now, when you're, you did your first deal as a passive investor, is there anything that you liked or disliked, uh, you know, learn, you learned from that investment? Yeah, no, I really, I really liked that investment uh, a lot. That first deal was, it was also, a, it was a larger deal. It was over a hundred okay. units. It okay. was in, in a market that I wasn't very familiar with, but uh, what was, well, I really felt very comfortable with the operator. Um, and to me, that that was that was very important. There were some times because of the location, it, there were um, I think there was like a hurricane or something that happened, and you know they were very transparent with what 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 was happening. We kind of got a play by play on that, and even though we knew that, of course, there's always risks. It's good to know when you know to know more real time versus longer term, like what's happening on the property and it ended up being a, a, a good deal and it was something that i was able to to talk about as i moved um transitioned over to active okay what um do you have any advice maybe somebody that wants to passively invest what are some questions they could ask an operator to kind of vet them yeah so i would say um one of the things is is understand first as a as a passive investor for yourself i would say ask yourself what is your own personal strategy what what is it that you're looking to do um you know some folks are looking to just invest retirement funds and so they have a longer term and then they can can afford to be in a deal for a much longer term so you, you really need to know that there uh, i'd also say how much money are you feeling comfortable with i think these are just things that sometimes we take 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 for granted i i've had you know, investors that I, uh, you know, told them that it, it's not the right time for them just because it was, it wasn't money that they could, you know, um, ha have not with them, you know, for, for a period of time. And so it, it just wasn't the right time. But then for those investors, I would say, you know, make sure that you, you, you have a good understanding of the operator, um, some of the deals that they've done before, or if they're new, you know, what, 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 types of deals that they're that they're looking at making sure that you understand you know what returns are what types of returns there are and what what does that mean and again just feeling comfortable with the strategy where it's mm -hmm. located where the property is located and making sure that you feel comfortable with that okay yep, great points what markets do you currently invest in now uh, for your own yes yeah, so um, so I I have had deals in the Atlanta market, which okay. I you know I really like that market, uh, and then more recently I've been investing in the Birmingham market, okay. which um, is uh there it's two and a half hours from from Atlanta. It's like a, it is a different market though, but I I really do uh, like that market. It's it's seen some great growth. 
So what's kind of your, your criteria for, for what's a good deal for you? What are you looking for? And how would yeah, you explain to yeah. me as an investor, like, Hey, this is the deal you should come with me. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm focusing a lot more on now, especially, you know, post pandemic, um, maybe pre financial crisis for the country <laughs> is this understanding, um, where, you know, where the, it, it's always basically everybody always says location, 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 but that really is true. Um, the type of the, so, cause it really influences the market, the sub market that you're in, or, you know, you may have a city, but then where, where is it really located within that city? That could, that could be very different. Um, you know, 15 minutes or a block could make a big difference. And so you really want to understand understand the the demographics of the area some of the things that I look at are the um the average income for the area I want to make sure that it's it's not at a at a level where I think people may sh if we're doing rent increases uh you know just kind of doing a quick affordability calculation to just see based on that income you right. know what what would be an acceptable amount so um under understanding that and then and then also you know um it's it's also the the asset itself is is there an opportunity to add value those are the deals that i i prefer the most that probably most people do as well just mm -hmm. um the opportunity that in commercial real estate is different from like single family where you really have an opportunity to force appreciation because you're you're driving income and that's where you can make the biggest impact and so um and managing expenses so those are those are the things that that i would be focusing on with um with investors awesome so i think it's always said that multifamily is the team sport and while you can do it all like what part of it do you prefer or do you actually uh take take enjoyment from yeah yeah uh, you know i really like to play a lot in, you know on the different in different parts of it but i have to say that um I also like to focus on the, the period where you're holding the property, yeah. where you're you're you you've acquired it, and then you're trying to find the ways to to maximize the the returns, and then you know conveying that to to the investors. And so um, I I do like that part of it, but I I do like to I like to be in the hunt too, um, <laughs> looking for the deals. Yeah, I think it's everyone always says you know it's all high fives at the closing table, but but yeah. the actual. The work starts at the closing day, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's when you put your business plan in. Yeah. Great point, Nick. That's absolutely true. And because you're in it for the long haul, it's, yeah. even though it does take a long time to get a deal, you know, not, not to, not, not to downplay that, but you're going to be holding the deal longer than it probably took you to get it. Mm -hmm. Fact. <laughs> now, out of the deals you've done, uh, I guess, what hasn't gone as planned and what were your lessons learned out of it? Yeah, I think um so one of the one of the deals that we had, we um we had purchased it in in 2018. At the end of 2018, we had just done some major capital improvements on the exteriors in 2019 and were positioning ourselves in 2020 to do the interior improvements. This was a value add deal. Uh -huh. Um in uh you know in a in a in a, in a c plus area so mm -hmm. you, you can probably guess where this is going so with the pandemic happening we really had to rethink our business plan um our plan was to to go in to do some really you know strong improvements on the property um and then and then all and coupled with increase the rent but with the pandemic happening in March, um, we had gotten two units done and we thought, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen. And we decided that it would be would be better if we held back on doing significant improvements on the interiors mm -hmm. to a moderate update and hold on more to our reserves because we were we had raised the money right. up front to to do that those terms. And so that meant though that if that we weren't going to be able to hit the 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 the, the metrics that we thought in terms of revenue because right. we weren't going to turn as many units that had that. 
But um, what I am proud of for that deal was that we were able to manage those turns and, and everything within the cash flow. So we still be were able to deliver um, a good uh, profit for our investors when we sold it. But, um, you know, it was a it was a case where you have to also just always be flexible and understanding what's happening in the bigger environment, because that can impact what's going to happen um, from your micro environment in your deal. <laughs> Yep. That's a that's a great answer. So kind of you talked about you know the pandemic and we're sitting here in January of, of 23. Like what kind of uh I guess um plans do you have for 23 as far as buttoning up your current portfolio? And are you expanding or what what is your plan? Yeah, so for for 23, definitely looking for more acquisitions, but also wanting to stay focused on the deals that we currently have right. executing on those on those mm -hmm. business plans as well. We just recently acquired a deal at the end of last year. Congratulations. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So for, for that property, you know, we we want to definitely stay focused um, to, to make sure that we drive the results that we were looking for for our investors. Awesome. That's great. What, uh, Sonia, what would be a common myth you hear in multifamily you'd like to debunk? Um, I think, I think. Sometimes I, I, I hear, you know, sometimes people don't really understand the, the role of asset management or mm -hmm. what's, what's involved in that, especially, and, and also sometimes um, passive investors may not, uh, may not understand those aspects as well. And it, it's such an important part of, of the business. Um, and I think it gets a little underplayed because like you said, it's always, it's, it's always great to close and, and you know, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. no thrill of, of that, but not everybody likes looking at the monthly reports. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, you know, I, I think I think one of the things is that it, it does take a, a lot of, of work and, and time to to do the asset management of the property to make sure that you're building a good relationship with your the property management company that you're working with or, or if you're self-managing that you feel that you have the systems in place to be able to. Yes. Um, to, to execute. I think that's, that's so key. And there's so much happening behind the scenes hmm. that, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you don't, you don't always, well, I guess at the end of the day, I guess you're supposed to see it in the results, but you know, there's a lot of time it takes, it'll take the longer lead time than people think. And yep. it, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, but it, it's rewarding. Yeah, I agree. I mean, bad management can, I mean, good management can turn around a bad deal and a good deal can die with bad management. So I a million percent. Point. Mm -hmm. yeah. How has passive income changed your life? Yeah. So for, for me, you know, being a passive investor when I, when I first started was really important because it was an opportunity for me to see if this is something that I, uh, that I wanted to do um, more act actively um, and it, it also gave me exposure to markets that I hadn't been um, researching before. So, so I got a chance to see new markets. And so what it, what it really did was it really helped to build my, my own internal resume of uh, what I could transition over to, to active investing. But then it also so it, it just also was an additional piece to my portfolio that that really just gave me um, some different uh, diversity, if you will, in what I was holding, especially when you're in corporate, you know, you're in a company, you're, you're putting money in a 1k plan. And yes. it's like, okay, here, this is what you can choose from. And it wasn't really until I was out of corporate that I realized that there's more that you can actually be <laughs> invested in. So not saying any particular other asset class is bad. It's just that I, I love real estate and you can, you know, it's, 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 it's a great way to sort of balance out your overall portfolio. Mm -hmm. no, that's awesome. That's great. Do you have any daily habits that you do that kind of keep you on track to search for more properties and, and keep you motivated to find that next deal? Yeah, it's um, it's it's great that you're asking this question, especially at the beginning of the year, because I was thinking about my habits and and things that I do. But um, I, I I do believe in in the morning. It's just you know just sometimes just meditating 
and praying and then and also just kind of hugging my kids because yeah. they're the reason really that I'm in this. I'm trying to build something that they'll be able to benefit from later. Yep. So that's that those are some legacy. Of the, the legacy. That's that's yeah. important. Yeah, it, keep, it keeps me motivated because I, I always say, well, you know, you can't hand down your degrees or your certifications, but you can't True. hand the property down. Uh, <laughs> and, the educa and the education of how to yeah. do these things. Yes, so that's absolutely. that's mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Well, you know, I took one of my questions about asking your why, so let's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the family is a, is a really important part of that. And, you know, I and I know that people that uh, passively invest, it's also important for them too. And that's why, you know, they, they're they they're looking for deals that they think make sense for them. And, you know, we, we try to find the deals that we, that make sense also. And, you know, I, I think it's family and then, and then also just trying to do, trying to do the best in this business. Yep, exactly. Now, Sonia, if you could say, turn back the clock to your younger self, is there anything you would uh, tell yourself, you know, when you're maybe 18, 20 years old to do differently or any advice to that younger person? Yeah. So it's, it's funny. I, I think I would, I would still con continue on in the, uh, the uh, accounting a path that I had. Right. Um, but I would definitely say to get involved in real estate faster to, you know, when something kind of interests you, you really should pursue it. You should really pursue it more because that's sometimes, you know, something speaking to you to saying this, this could be a calling for you. This could be a, a path for you. And, you know, and I think that's why it is great to, to get involved in, in passive investing earlier on because you could have, you know, but I could have built a more of a portfolio I when yeah. I was <laughs> Well, you did start, it seems like before it got pretty frothy, you know, the last like two years, I'd say, because you said you started, in, you know, four or five years ago, 2018. Is that, is that right? Oh, so no, I, in terms of uh, my company, I started um, in 20, well, 2013 is when I was oh. out of corporate and then 2014 oh, yeah. um, was when I had, our, we closed our first deal. You're like the OG of, it seems like now being that, in that <laughs> long, you know? I know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sonia, are there any books you'd recommend? Like a top two books that you'd say, hey, you're starting real estate. Read, you got to read these two books. Yeah. So I, I have to say for me, even in, uh, for me, what was really pivotal was um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, probably a lot of people hear that a lot. You hear that a lot from <laughs> a lot of folks. But for me, when I was, um, you know, on the subway going to work and yeah. just had that chance to read it, I was just like, this is incredible. You know, this is an incredible way to, to think about money and real estate. So that so that was um, really good. And um, the I think the 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 other book is um, I think I'm going to get it the, the, the name wrong, but it's like the, the real estate entrepreneur by by Brian Shady's it's. Okay. It's hmm. it's a book that talks about and he goes into depth about property management. And um I think that it could be scary to some people to, right. to read the level of information, but I think it's it's a good it's a good summary. No, great, great answers. Now this is the passive road to retirement. So we always have to ask. I think I know your answer, but what would be somebody just starting out? What's your advice for somebody to get their purse, you know, first passive income stream? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, find uh, people that you feel comfortable with that you would like to work with longer term and, you know, see, find the, see the deals that they're doing and, and um, identify them so that you can, you can work alongside them and learn there's so much of the business is, is, is about learning and you know it's, i've heard people say oh you know you've done one deal you've done them on it's like that's not the case at all <laughs> right, <I guess>. yeah. <laughs> um so just make sure you feel comfortable with the with the type of deal that you're that you're looking at yep yeah it's great and then uh my last question for you is if you could step into our shoes for the interview What's one question you would ask yourself that we did not ask you? 
Um, I uh, something that people don't know about you. Okay. That that, that people don't know about you. Um, so for me, um, when I was in, when I was at at Rutgers. I was a security guard. I was oh, really? guard for, for, the <laughs> for the dorm. And it wasn't for long. It was just for a semester. But it was really interesting because it just it just kind of revealed a lot about like, like people's, you know, like psyche. So they see a security guard there and it's like all they have to do is sign in. And a lot of people just didn't want to. <laughs> and it was just like <laughs> You know, um, it was interesting the way people thought about what the role I played there. And it's probably very different on campus right now. But um, as a student security guard, it was it was um, very uh, it was an interesting it was an interesting time for sure. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Do you have any other uh, questions? Nick? you want to get into our five to thrive? Let's do the five to thrive, man. Let's, awesome. let's kick it. OK. So this is our, <laughs> <laughs> so this is our word association game. So I'll just rattle off five words and just give us the first word or phrase that comes into your mind. The only okay. thing is you cannot repeat the same answer. Okay. All right. I'll try. All right. All right. The first one, real estate agent. Um, I'm going to say, uh, trusting. Okay. All right. Single family versus multifamily. Multi is better. Mm -hmm. Okay. CPA. High integrity. Nice. Education. Important. And last one, Bedrock Real Estate. Focused on investors. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> That's your company. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Sonia, thanks so much for coming on. It was a pleasure to have you on our show.